I had heard a lot of people, you know, mention, oh, maybe Shanks has devil fruit powers, but I almost wonder if it's like even more primal than that, where, you know, animals sense danger. Hey everyone, how's it going? Noxadar here, and welcome to our fourth reaction to the One Piece sub. Which, by the way, kind of brings up a point that I'd like to address before we continue with our reaction. Somebody had brought this up in a previous video that I hadn't really considered, and I wanted to address this as soon as I could. Obviously, I couldn't go back to the first video and do it, but they pointed out the fact that a lot of first-time viewers are probably coming to my reaction uh, with the general assumption that I'd never, ever seen one piece before and that's just simply not fully true so when the first teaser trailer for the live action came out i everybody kind of had mixed opinions about it but i was like wow this actually looks fun fast forward to the official trailer and by the time i saw that i thought yeah i actually really want to watch this show i didn't have any like forethought about doing any sort of one piece content on youtube at this point I am very much a gaming channel and I had dozens upon dozens of videos that I was doing batch editing for and getting them ready to go up on the YouTube channel. So while I was doing that, I really just wanted to be inundated in the One Piece world. I didn't at that point really have that much interest in the anime, however I knew I had access to the anime. I let the One Piece English dub from Netflix play in the background as second monitor content while I was editing gameplay videos. More often than not, I found it kind of distracting because I was recognizing English voice actors from other anime that I had seen in my childhood, and I didn't really like it. So I started, you know, turn it down. So I couldn't hear it quite as well. And besides the fact that I was also editing gameplay of Call of Duty, where I was, you know, swearing obscenities, dying thousands of times, and grenades and explosions are going off with no way to control the volume slider, or I was falling off of buildings for like the 10,000th time in Assassin's Creed on a botched assassination attempt, or I had like those like really itchy beggars just like pushing on me and driving me crazy. Oh my gosh, I couldn't believe that. So the fact of the matter is, it was not an optimal viewing experience, and again, I didn't have really any intention of sharing any of that with the YouTube audience, because I, I, at that point, I didn't have a YouTube audience. Gameplay videos maybe get 10 views if they're lucky. <laughs> so it wasn't until I watched the One Piece live action and realized there's a very special story here, one that I had shrugged off, put off for the longest time. It was because of that that I did a review. And after that review, some people had suggested some videos for me to check out. And that's really where I started to get a deepening sense of appreciation for the art, the style, the substance that there is within the One Piece story. And it made me think, I think it actually would be worth it to give an honest reaction to the Japanese original voice actors with the English subs. That way, I, it could have all of my focus and I could actually watch the story as someone who can appreciate it with fresh eyes. In the English dub, I had watched up to Arlong Park, but again, it was over, it was happening right here, and I was looking over here. <laughs> I was not taking in very much. And so I don't want you to think that I'm some sort of like snake oil merchant who's really trying to put one over on you. Uh, it just didn't factor in my brain because when I think of my One Piece journey, I think of it in a linear faction, fact, faction, fashion, and I didn't consider the onboarding process that people would have throughout the different videos and maybe didn't catch where I had mentioned that before in one of the other previous videos. So I think they have a valid point. I want to be very upfront and I never want to mention this again so that we can just enjoy the reactions because I had considered at one point before I started this that maybe I should just pick it up with episode 40, 41, but with the with the Japanese audio and the English subs. But I, I thought that would be kind of weird because the dub 
like I said, was so distracting and I would have missed so many moments uh, done with a Japanese performance that I would really want to experience. And like I said, this viewing is my focus. It's me paying attention. It's actually absorbing One Piece instead of just having One Piece going on around me. So the first 40 views were done with the English dub. I didn't really watch them. If you feel in some way that I have misrepresented uh, the content on offer, I do apologize. But you know what? No, I don't. Because the fact is, I make videos for me. Up until that point, I didn't have an audience. My gameplay videos hardly generate any traction whatsoever. I'm just a guy who wants to enjoy the One Piece story. The truth of the matter is, I'm still making videos for me. This video was made for me in this rambling session. I made for me. And maybe you'll get something out of it. That being said, let's go ahead and check out episode 4 of One Piece. Oh, there's Buggy's uh, Jolly Roger. Jolly Roger, right? Yeah. Oh. Okay, so now we're going to see Nami, yeah. Right? Oh, this is cool. This is really neat seeing it in the anime. By the way, I apologize if it sounds like I'm yelling at you. Headphones. If this is what I woke up to from my dream, I'd want to go back to sleep. Wait. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Did she just give like a weather report? That's amazing. Like I said, every major conversation I've ever had with anybody in Japan was always about the weather. And so this is kind of what I mean, like going from English dub to like a Japanese um uh, original voice acting is uh, this is like more of an inference on Japanese culture where like in the English is like oh okay but that's just kind of weird that you would talk about that <laughs> that's interesting so everybody calls Zoro a bounty hunter but he himself <laughs> Probably like when people called me a reaction channel from my one video out of the hundreds of gaming videos. I get, I get that. I can relate. Hmm. <laughs> I love that musical form of storytelling. It's so interesting seeing Shanks crew like animated and like actually being able to pay attention to them and have that like, a, you know, that anchor point of, oh, this is what they look like in the live action. <laughs> <laughs> what a burn. Hey man, I'd go for juice if somebody offered it too. Doesn't make me a kid, does it? I love that use of silence right there. Because it, it almost wasn't like a silence to set the stage. It was a silence to create weight. We just love that number 10, don't we? It's a good number. Yeah. 10 barrels, one bottle. Equal exchange. Well, not anymore. I love how the size of the bounty infers almost like the power level of the character themselves. The one thing that I learned living in Japan is just how much Japanese love to rank things. Like, for example, I lived in a city with the second most beautiful sunset in all of Japan. 
That's what I mean. <laughs> they just rank it. Let's see how Luffy reacts to this. Because he really sounded like a whiny kid in the live action. Okay, yeah. Dang, in the live action, he just said you're not a real man, but here he said you're not a real man or a pirate. It's a bridge too far, Luffy. <laughs> That's good. That's pretty funny. Is there a rule to the devil fruit? Do you have to eat like so much of it to gain the power? Could they make devil fruit juice and then everybody gets a power? Uh, is this the mess he left? I like how Luffy stood up for them, even though he basically told them in under no uncertain, you know, terms that yeah, you're not like really men or pirates. However, he's willing to rush headlong into confrontation with a whole group of mountain bandits. That's not very smart. The headstrong nature with which Luffy tackles problems, we would consider it thoughtless, but I do think that it is entirely driven by the flame of passion. We can call it stupid, but there is a clear line of logic that you can follow here. And nobody has convinced me that just because he is emotionally intelligent means that when he does things that we would consider unwise is really a demonstration of a lack of intelligence. It doesn't come from a place of lack of intelligence. It might just come from a place of being without caution, maybe. If you remember, Kobe had an overabundance of, and it basically kept him stun locked in his own trauma, which somebody had pointed out, and that's so true. Where Luffy is really free of the attachments of things like trauma, but I can definitely see that his hot-headed stubbornness here is going to get him into trouble. Hmm. It seems like a big theme is the understanding of how the world works. And the night. No, I, I can never say this word. Na, 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 naivety? Na, naivety? Na, naiveness? <laughs> how naive children can be about the world and the way it quote unquote works. I like how Shanks wears a smile, but his eyes are really vacant and they don't give away really how he's feeling. You'll see what I mean when it goes back to him. Yeah, right here. So this kind of reminds me of another story. Imagine that me telling stories. It's going to happen a lot. I can recall this one time. I had gone down to the teacher's office and I was done with my classes for the day and I was really having a bad day. I was kind of dealing with something personal and one of the teachers, they came up to me and they, you know, they said, uh, uh, Teddy sensei, uh, how are you? And I looked at him, I gave a smile and I said, yeah, I'm great. I'm, I'm having a, I'm having a great day. And she looks at me and she kind of gets really solemn uh, like she's searching for something and then she looks at me and she says your mouth is smiling but your eyes are sad and it was something that I learned about Japanese culture and I think you kind of see it like very prevalent in like the way they use emojis and things which is basically like smiling eyes and and things like that that I really was confronted with the realization that I couldn't hide things from people because the eyes as it said are windows to the soul and here was someone who could very clearly read the emotion on my face and there was nothing I could do to mask it so 
one of the things that I really want to try to do with this viewing now that I can actually pay attention to it because I want to see how Oda utilizes it is I want to see the expressions in the eyes uh, because my Western sensibility tells me we tend to direct a lot of our expression through it. That's why I grew a beard around mine to obfuscate. I want to see what the eyes are doing. And what's really interesting about Shanks is he doesn't give it away. It is very much like keeping cards close to the vest. What? Look at that smile. He knows what's going on. <laughs> see, you see the fear in Luffy's eyes. His eyes are hidden. And he's realizing... His eyes told a different story. He didn't give it away. I think that's a really strong moral code to have. Like, be willing to defend your friends. But take slights. You know, take things as they come. You can grow stronger from it. I'm never going to unsee it, just how expressive these eyes are. There it is. Oh, wow, that's cool. I guess I didn't realize he did that in the anime, too. I had heard a lot of people, you know, mention, oh, maybe Shanks has devil fruit powers, but I almost wonder if it's, like, even more primal than that, where, you know, animals sense danger. And like I said, the eyes, very expressive. They tell very different stories. And I think he made his intentions very clear. And, I, and maybe that's what it is. It's just instinctual. It's like, I need to get out of here. <laughs> I do feel like as I'm seeing this, hearing the music, I didn't really pay any attention to the music the first time around. <laughs> Luffy, as an archetype, really seems like he facilitates the mentor and the hero. And so I wondered if Luffy actually took any real direct inspiration from Shanks beyond just the hat and wanting to uh, pursue that dream of being King of the Pirates. And so it's funny to actually see that, to see how his attitude had shifted from being a kind of like a whiny kid to the cocksure pirate hero that he becomes later on oh yeah he'll be the best And I love what gives this moment so much weight is that Luffy also knows how valuable that hat is. He's listened to Shanks tell him before. This isn't just some new thing like, oh yeah, by the way, have my hat. And there it is, his call to action. And he carries that with him, symbolic through the hat. <laughs> you know, for one minute, I actually thought he was going to talk about the fact that if there's a bird, there is probably land nearby. Maybe I'm the idiot here because <laughs> there is definitely a direct line from I'm hungry to there's a bird to let's eat it. So I'm the fool here. <laughs> I love how that bird was like way bigger than, you know, even we were led to believe. Uh-oh. I wouldn't do that. <laughs> it's 
Yeah. Oh, wow. That's a huge ship. What the heck? Okay. There you go. Appeal to her senses. She'll give it back. Just explain that you just got it. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> I love how every time there's chaos with Nami around, Luffy's al almost always the cause of it. How many can say they were in the mouth of a bird and made it safely to land? Man, what a cool episode. I had so much fun watching this. So, like I said, when we get to about episode 41, 42, uh, I will definitely be seeing things, but... What's really interesting is, as I go through this, I really am kind of taking everything in, uh, again, with an asterisk for, like, the first time. I feel like I'm seeing things with fresh eyes, and I'm experiencing things that I hadn't picked up on, I hadn't clued in, I had assumed weren't actually that deep. And maybe for a lot of people, they'll listen to me say these things, and they'll say, dude, it's not that deep. But... You know, for me it is. And that's kind of the the magical nature of storytelling is that there are often very different things people get out of it. And so to be able to go back to source, to get the experience from the Japanese voice actors and kind of see how that whole culmination came about, free of the distraction of English voice actors that I could recognize from other series, this is 100% been such a valuable insight for me uh, to react to and hopefully for you to get something out of it as well. I appreciate you guys so much. I thank you for joining me, but that's all the time we have for today. I'm going to do another uh, one-shot episode reaction for episode five, and then we'll be back to our big three. And I think I'm going to continue that pattern and we'll do it in sequences of, of five. And that'll kind of help us get through the series a little bit quicker. So that's all for me. This is Noxidar out.